There are few feelings in this world worse than having your truck broken down. Seriously, it sucks so bad. It's like it just sucks the whole wind out of you and suddenly you're 14 years old again, scrambling to find a ride to and from work so you don't get fired. It's really not fun. And while we've probably all been there at one point or another, there are certainly some trucks that are prone to mechanical failures more than others. But which trucks are solid runners and which ones are just not quite up to snuff? Great news is that I'm Junior with Custom Offsets and today we're going over our top picks for the most reliable trucks of all time. Let's get it. There's a lot of ways that we could take this video because auto manufacturers have been making trucks for the last 100 plus years. And while I would love to make a comprehensive guide to all of the reliable trucks over the last like millennia and which ones to avoid, I think I speak for both of us when I say that we don't want that. I mean, I guess I could start teaching a college course on it, but hey, let's face it. 60% of you are probably gonna be texting, three of you will be sleeping in the back of the class and the remaining 25% of you just won't show up because you ran into traffic, trust me. I've been there. But for that reason, we're gonna try and keep this list as short and concise as possible by limiting this to trucks newer than 2000. Yeah. All right, now that we have some common ground, let's get into this list. First up today is Dustin Korth's favorite, the ever popular Cat Eye Silverado. Specifically here, we're talking about the 03 to 07, although a lot of this does fall into the 99 to 02s as well, with the 5.3 liter LS, V8, Triton, not Triton, Vortec engine. This one makes the list for a lot of reasons, partially because, hey, I owned one, it was the Sierra, but same difference, but probably the number one reason is that these trucks are just damn tough. They're tough, not Ford tough, they're tough. While this isn't a new truck by any means, the stories that a lot of them could tell you would shock even the toughest of men. Making somewhere in the neighborhood of like 300 Hirsch Purs, these trucks were known for taking constant abuse from being on the farm and or being hooked to and hauled trailers with that were far heavier than they probably should have been towing with and all of the high schoolers that have owned them over the years. I'm just gonna say it, I'm just gonna say it. And the best part is that they just keep coming back for more. There's plenty of examples of these trucks running over 250,000 miles with like little to no issues or hell, even more than that. But better yet, I can tell you personal firsthand experience of buddies of mine in high school literally running their 5.3s so low on oil that you can hear the lifter slapping on every revolution of the engine and you just top it back off with some more oil and send it for the 50,000 miles. But hey, what do I know? Now, I know that there's gonna be at least one person in the comments below who's gonna bring up the 4L60E and I know the second to third shift solenoids were about as solid as a glass support rod, but let's be honest here. A Corvette solenoid and a gear band and bingo bango, you've got yourself a 4L65E and all your worries just disappear. Or don't be a and throw a 4L80 in there. They all bolt up, because it's all LS. <laughs> well, that's an excuse I can't argue with. Good night. Regardless of your GM guy or not, you have to admit these old iron block 5.3s are tough. And for that reason, the Cat Eye Silverado has solidified its place on our list of most reliable trucks. Not to mention you can just go to a junkyard and find one and throw it in literally any vehicle in the world and it'll drive just fine, but there's that too. Running on the same premise of an extremely solid engine for the platform, but switching gears into a diesel truck here, we're talking about the beloved, ever hyped, and less than fuel efficient, 7.3 power stroke. Ironic that a vehicle found on road dead is on this list, right? I kid, I kid. Again, being specific here, we're talking about the 99 to 02 Super Duty body styles. You know, they're like the roundy boys that look like a six liter, but it's not the six liter that's prone to stretching the TTY bolts on the heads and blowing head gaskets every time you breathe on the throttle. Breathe, darn you! Yeah. The 7.3 liter power stroke originally was introduced in the 1994 year model and followed up the 7.3 liter IDI diesel that Ford had used in the three quarter ton and one ton trucks previously. While the 7.3 is an old engine by today's standards, it still has a cult like following and for damn good reason. I mean, I own one, I don't know about diesels. The 7.3 was and continues to be extremely reliable. This is due to a few reasons, but for starters, it's likely because quite honestly, these trucks didn't make enough power from the factory to be dangerous. 
It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Rated at a staggering 235 horsepower from the factory. I just spit everywhere. I hope the camera didn't pick that up. These trucks definitely didn't break any land speed records, like, at all. While it may not have gotten you to work on time if you were running late, this lack of overall performance meant that the truck ran smooth and safe for literal hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles. Better yet, being produced in the late 90s and early 2000s, these trucks were free of any emission systems, meaning that there's like no EGRs, no DPFs, or even a DEF system to worry about and give you any issues with. All you got was pure, unadulterated ball eagle screaming freedom. Again, while definitely not the quickest or most powerful truck on the market, these four three quarter and one ton trucks earned their spot multiple times in the half million mile club with one extreme case of a gentleman from Texas running his regular cab dually F-350 hot shot trucking for a whopping 1.3 million miles. That's insane. Now, reliability can obviously depend on where you live as well, right? And that's the whole point of this video because seeing as most of these seven trees don't really like the cold, they might not be most reliable up here in Wisconsin when it gets down to like negative 30 in the winter. So if you're expecting to put a block heater on your 7.3 every night, then hey, you're golden. And your old reliable million mile truck will just keep doing what it's doing for another million through the cold as well. Still with us? Good. Now is a great time to remind you that if you need wheels and tires for your reliable truck or your unreliable truck so it looks good on the side of the road, then hey, we got you. Just head on over to customoffsets.com. And hey, while you're shopping, there's a little toggle up there at the top that you can swap to monthly payments because if you're like me and summer's just kind of got you strained on cash, then you can finance with a little 0% APR financing on wheels, tires, suspension. Pretty sure you can get a t-shirt if you want to. Plus, we'll mount balance and ship them for free to save you time, money, and hassle. Check it all out. Customoffsets.com. Now, back into some reliable trucks. All right, so changing gears again here, let's look at a mid-size truck. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to reliable mid-size, there's only one truck that like blatantly comes to mind. And it's a Toyota Tacoma, baby. The Tacoma. The Tacoma has long been a staple of dependability and reliability when it comes to the smaller trucks. Sure, it's no Chevy half ton, and it certainly doesn't sound like a good old power stroke, but even I can't deny that the Tacomas have seen some abuse over the years. In fact, the Tacoma is a platform of choice for most off-road and overland builds of today because they're small, nimble, and they just downright put in work. Reliable Toyota, let's go. These dependable little trucks feature a handful of options from cab size to bed length. So not only can you get a dependable truck, but you can also get it however you want, which is pretty awesome. All right, guys, so we talked about a mid-sized truck, we talked about a half ton, we talked about a diesel, but what if you wanna go balls to the walls here and build yourself a dually? Look no further than the one and only Dodge slash Ram 3500 with the 6.7 liter Cummins. Now sure, if you happen to be looking at a third gen, the interior may leave a bit to be desired, but still, when you look at the dependability, it's almost impossible to deny that the 6.7 liter Cummins has long been a solid option for anyone who wants a good running diesel pickup. Not to mention it's about 10 years newer than the other diesels we talked about. But the 6.7 liter has a ton of options and improvements over its 5.9 liter little brother. Perhaps one of the coolest things about this truck is that the Cummins opted to ditch the fixed geometry turbo for the flexibility of a variable geometry turbo or a VGT. Not only does that VGT give you some awesome turbo noises, you get a much more flexible power band with the engine hitting peak torque at just 1500 RPMs. And if that's not enough for you, the 6.7 came with a newer, bigger, beefier 68 RFE automatic transmission, which had significantly less issues than most of the Dodges that came out beforehand. What do you guys think? Have you owned any of these trucks? If so, let us know your experiences in the comments below. And as always, be sure to like the video, share it with a friend, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. With that, I'm Junior with Custom Offsets, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.